Dutch courage. From the stern rail of the 500-ton Dutch ship Tromp, Captain Harmon Hyder surveyed the many vessels anchored in the Downs. It was just two weeks into the year of 1945, and the war in Europe was nearly over. Most of the vessels, awaiting orders and convoys, were 7,000 ton liberties, full of supplies for the advancing troops. The American-made liberty ships were an emergency product, with different parts coming from as many as 20 separate companies and then put together in shipyards throughout the United States of America. As dusk fell, Captain Hyder made sure that his anchor light was bright and visible. He also released a little more chain, as with the close proximity of other ships, it was not the place to drag anchor. At 10 p.m. he turned in, leaving orders to the seamen on watch to awaken him if any of the other vessels looked as if they were getting too close. A loud explosion awoke him in the early hours. Hyder jumped out of his bunk already dressed, which was the way seamen slept in those dark days of war. A jumper and a duffel coat were added to starve off the cold January air. As he reached the deck, he had no need to speculate on the disaster. Close by, the Liberty ship James Harrod had collided with an anchored sister ship, the Raymond B. Stevens. The impact had caused part of the James Harrod's cargo of petrol to explode. The roar of the flames and explosions of the gasoline cans were deafening. As the fire spread, the Liberty's crew justifiably panicked and made to abandon ship. Some of the officers and men went forward and managed to drop her anchor. A blazing ship drifting through a crowded anchorage would have brought chaos and destruction. Captain Hyder had no hesitation in ordering his men to up anchor. His sailors had mustered at the noise of the blast, but a few of them were reluctant to carry out their skipper's command. Some of the crew argued that it was madness to go anywhere near the inferno. They reasoned with their master that they had come through the war years unscathed and did not want to be put in mortal danger from this allied victim. The Dutch captain's attitude was resolute and he conned his ship to the bow of the James Harrod, where the last of her crew had some respite from the heat and flames. As the tromp brushed the side of the towering bow, the panicking Americans poured over the guardrails of their ship and jumped onto the small ship's deck below. The captain then called for full ahead to clear the other vessel's anchor chain. Fortunately, the maneuver had taken long enough for the remaining men to be saved. At daybreak, the James Harrod was still ablaze and went on burning for days defying the gallant attempts of the National Fire Service to douse the flames. Tugs beached the ship at Kingstown, but she refloated and drifted north with the flood tide until finally grounding on the Malm Rocks opposite Deal Castle. On the 22nd of January, as the blackened hull cooled with her 441 feet hull beached in the shallow water, she started to split in half. She became a total wreck although it could be seen that some of her cargo was salvageable. Landing craft spent the following months alongside her, offloading trucks and four gallons cans of petrol. The sea around the ship had a multicolored sheen from the split fuel, which would drift on the tide for miles. The petrol was then taken by lorry to a camp just outside of Deal for examination. The non-contaminated cans were driven to Walmart Railway Station and poured into a railway tanker. <laughs>